Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Bosch dishwasher circulation pump. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new circulation pump. The circulation pump is what circulates the water through the dishwasher. The main reason to be changing it out is if the motor's gone bad and it's not circulating, or the impeller and seals have failed, and you would rather change the whole assembly rather than rebuild it. In order to change the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet and take it apart. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. First thing that we're going to do is remove your dishwasher drain line follow it up to wherever it goes and remove the clamp. We're going to use a 5 16 on ours. Make sure that when you take these off that you have some towels around. Both the water line and the drain line might put some water out. Next thing we have to do is remove the fill line. It's usually connected to the hot water tap and of course we already had that shut off and the power disconnected from earlier. But now we need to remove the line and we can take it off with a 5 8 inch wrench. Now that we have the lines disconnected underneath the sink, we can open up the dishwasher door and take the screws out that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that we have the screws out, and before we pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet, we have to take some stuff out of the bottom of the dishwasher. First thing we're going to do is take out the lower rack and set it aside. With the dish rack out of the way, we're going to remove the spray arm. All you have to do is lift up on it to unsnap it. Once you have it out, you can pull it out and set it aside. Then we have to remove the two filters. The basket has an arrow on it that lines up with the arrow on the filter. All you have to do is turn it counterclockwise until the arrows are at 9 and 3 o'clock, and then you can lift it out. And then the screen filter, all you have to do is lift up on it and pull it out. Now that we have the filters out of the way, we can remove the four Torque 20 screws. Two of them hold in the locking tabs and two of them hold in the spray arm support. These two screws we're just going to take out. We're not going to pull the support out of the dishwasher. Once you have all four screws out, then we can use the Torque 20 driver to remove the screws that hold the front panel onto the dishwasher door. We're just going to remove three screws on each side so the panel can slide off. Now that we have the screws out, we can lift the door up. You want to hold the panel on so it doesn't fall off. And then you can grab the panel and slide it out of the control panel. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. If your spacers fell off while you were taking the front door panel off, just set them aside with the panel. We'll put them on when we put the dishwasher back together. Now that we have the front panel off, we can open up the door and we're going to carefully use it to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. Once you have it out far enough that you can grab the frame, you can close the door again and pull it out the rest of the way. Now that you have the dishwasher out far enough that we can lay it on its back, yours may look a little bit different than ours. Yours may have some extra insulation or some side panels. If you have to remove any of that stuff, go ahead and do it so it's not in the way. Our model doesn't have it, so we can't show you how to do it. Once you have all that stuff cleared out, we can go around the back and use our Phillips screwdriver to remove these two screws. The screws we're taking out are located at the bottom on each side. Now that we have those two screws out, we can lay a towel down on the floor so we can put the dishwasher on its back. We're going to lay the towel down to protect the floor from the dishwasher and soak up any water that may come out. Once you have the towel down, we can put the dishwasher onto its back. Now that we have the dishwasher on the back, we can remove the kick panel. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out.
Once you have both screws out, you can take the panel off and set it aside. Now that we have the excess panel out of the way, we're going to use our Torque 20 driver and remove the screw on each side that holds this support bracket in and take it out and set it aside. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to lift this panel off so it comes off the tabs on each end. And then we're going to flex these two tabs right here so we can release the plastic from the metal support bracket. Once you have it released, you can set the support bracket aside. Now we can take off the straps that hold the circulation motor in. They're located in the front in the back of the motor. We're going to reach in with a flathead screwdriver and we have to get this black strap off this white post. Once you have the front one off, we can go down and take the back one off. Now that we have the rubber strap released, we can come on the other side of the pump on the left side and we have to remove this hose. So we're going to take it out from underneath this locking tab and then we can pull it out of the sump. Now that we have the hose off the sump assembly, we have to give a little slack in the wiring harness. So we're going to pull this black block out of the base. All you have to do is grab it and pull it out. You don't want to disconnect the two halves, just pull it out of the base. Once you have that off, we can use a flat bladed screwdriver to take the grounding wire off the circulation motor. Now that we have the grounding wire off the circulation motor, we're going to come over to the left side. We're going to pop the cover off. These are locking connectors, so there's little locking tabs right here that we have to press to release them. There's the double gray one on the L connection and the double blue one on the lower connection which is the neutral connection. So all you have to do is press this little tab right here and pull it off. We have to take the cover off each side on the hinges. All you have to do is press down and then pull it out. And then we have to unhook the hinge lanyard to release the tension from the springs. All you have to do is lift it off and let it go. Once you have both of them unhooked, we have to release the spring tension so we can pull the base off from the frame. We're just going to take and pop the whole spring assembly out of the base. We're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and get behind the bracket and pop it out. Once you have it out, you can just leave it hanging there. Once you have both springs out of the base, we can go up top and remove the four screws that hold the base of the frame. There's two on each side. There's the upper one and then the lower one that comes out with this bracket. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that we have everything disconnected, we can slowly pull the base off the frame. Might have to rock it back and forth to break it free. You just want to pull it down enough so we can pull this pump assembly out. Once you have it out far enough, you can reach in and pull this assembly out and set it up on the door. Once you get it part of the way out, you're going to have to reach in and disconnect that hose from the pump and pull it out of the sump body. And then you can lift the sump out the rest of the way. Next, we have to take the circulation pump off the whole sump assembly. So first, we're going to take the wires off the pump. You're going to have to use a flathead screwdriver to release the locking tabs on the wire harness, just like we did on the drain pump. We have the single black wire attached to the number one terminal on the motor. And then on the number two, we have the double blue with the red stripe. 
Now that we have the wires disconnected from the motor, we can use our 5 16 inch nut driver to loosen up this clamp that holds the circulation pump to the sump assembly. We're going to get all these wires out of the way and then we can reach in and loosen it up. Once you have the clamp loosened up, we can pull the circulation pump off the sump assembly. If the rubber seal comes off with it, you can pull it off and leave it with the sump assembly. It's not part of the circulation pump. When you have this apart, you want to go ahead and clean all this stuff up so when we put the part back in, you get a good seal. Here's the old circulation pump next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Looks like they added an extra terminal. There is a number three terminal now. We're just going to disregard that because we don't have a wire for it. But the other thing that we have to do is turn it over and swap out the rubber mounting straps. These are just pushed onto the motor pins. So all you have to do is wiggle them off and push them onto the new motor. Once you have them both swapped over to the new circulation pump, we can put it into the dishwasher. Now that we have everything cleaned up, and before we put the new part in, we're going to put this seal back in. All you have to do is press it into the housing. Make sure you get it all the way down so the bottom's out. Once you have the seal back in place, we can put the circulation pump in. You want to make sure your clamp is still there, and then we're going to put this fitting in first, and then slide it over and push the circulation pump all the way up into the sump assembly. Once you have it in place, we can use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp that holds the fitting. Now that we have the hose clamp tightened down, we can put the sump assembly back into the dishwasher. Before we put the sump assembly back in the dishwasher, you may want to turn it over and get this seal wet. That'll make it a little bit easier to slide around and mount on the lip of the tub. You can also get this lower grommet wet before you put the sump in. Once you're ready, you can lower the sump assembly back down into the dishwasher. Once you get it started going down, we can grab this hose that we have to push into the sump assembly. You want to make sure it goes in all the way so you get a good seal. And then once you have the sump in place, you want to make sure it's resting right in its support. Once you have the hose hooked up, you can put the sump in place on the tub. You want to make sure this line right here is right at 12 o'clock. Once you have the sump in place, we can lift the base back up and put the screws in to hold it in place. You may have to tap it up a little bit. You have to make sure that these screw holes line up. Once you push up on the base and line the screw holes up, we can put the screws in to hold it together. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to put these screws back in. We're going to put the ones on the bracket in first. So we're going to put it on the bracket first and kind of feed it down like this so we can line it up with the hole and tighten it down. Once you have the two in with the brackets, then we can put the other two in. Now that we have the base secured to the frame, we can go below and put the springs back on. To put the spring brackets in, all you have to do is push them back into their slots. You want to make sure they're all the way on the bottom one and not on one of these upper ones, otherwise they won't hold. Now that we have the springs back in place, we can go up top and reconnect everything else. First we're going to put the door cables back on and the covers over them. All you have to do is grab these and put the larger opening up like this so you can hook it over the hinge and stretch it up over and hook it on the door. Once you have it hooked on the hinge, we can put the cover back on. Remember the pin goes right here and then it snaps in over here. Once you have this side on, we can go to the other side. Now that we have both sides installed, we can reconnect the wires to the drain pump. 
Remember there was four wire connectors in there, but ours were on the two middle ones. We have uh, on the neutral was the blue and red, the double blue with the red stripe. And then on the upper one was the gray with the red stripe. Once you have them both on and locked into place, you can push the cover back down to cover them up. Now that we have the drain pump wires hooked up, we can run the hose over. All you have to do is make sure it goes underneath this clip right here. And then we can push it into the sump body. Make sure it goes all the way down so you get a good seal. Once you have the hose installed, we can go over to the other side and hook up everything on the motor. We're going to reconnect the wires. We're going to start at the top and reconnect the ground wire first. Remember these are all the locking types, so all you have to do is push them on so they lock into place. Once you have the ground wire in, then we can hook up the double blue. Remember the double blue went to number two. And then we can hook up the black wire, which went to the number one. Now that we have all the wires connected to the motor, we can put the wiring block back into the base. You want to make sure all the wires are out from underneath it, and then you can just push it back in and lock it in place. Once you have that in, we can put the rubber straps on that hold the motor. To put the strap back on, you have to reach in and stretch it over this little peg right here. If you can reach in there and do it with your hands, great. If not, you can grab it with a large flathead screwdriver and stretch it out and put it over the post. Once you have the one on the back hooked up, we can go to the one in the front. It's in here a little bit tight on the front, but all you have to do is reach in and stretch it with the screwdriver and get it over the post. Once you have it in place, you can go from the top and press it in with your finger, make sure it's all the way down. Once you have that in place, we can go up top and put the support bracket across the front. To put the support bracket back on, we have to first snap the wiring harness cover into it. It's going to snap in right here on the bracket. So we're going to line it up and just kind of flex these locking tabs over so it locks into place. Once you have it in place, you can set it down so that the locking tabs on the end of the support bracket hook over the frame. Once you have the support bracket in place, we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws in to hold it in place. Now that we have the support bracket back in, we can carefully lift the dishwasher back up and set it on its feet. Once you have it up on its feet, we can pull the towel out and set it aside. We can come around back and use our Phillips screwdriver to put in the two screws that holds the back to the base. Now that we have those two screws in, we can put the dishwasher back into the cabinet. First thing we need to do is put the lines back through the cabinet. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway and then go underneath the sink and pull on the hoses to make sure that they're not kinked or caught on anything underneath. We can push it back into the counter. We can hook back up the lines. So we're going to hook up the water line and use our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down. Then we can hook up the drain line back up to the air gap. All you have to do is push it on and tighten down the clamp using your 5 16 nut driver or screwdriver. Now that we have the lines reconnected underneath the sink, we can put the front panel back on the dishwasher. First thing we're going to do is put the spacers on the door so we can put the front panel on. To put the spacers on, all you have to do is line them up and push them into place. To put the front panel on, we're going to line it up with the control panel and then lift it up into place. Once you have it in place on top, you can push it in on the bottom. And then you have to hold it while we open up the door. And then we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws in to hold the panel on. You want to be careful that the door doesn't spring back up while you're putting the screws in. Now 
Now that we have the front panel attached, the extra weight should hold the door open so we can go and put the Phillips screws in to hold the dishwasher to the cabinet. Now that we have the dishwasher secured to the cabinet, we can put everything back in. First thing we're going to do is put the spray arm support back in. You're going to have to push it back a little bit and get it to line up with the openings so it'll slide down. Once you have it in place, we can use the Torque 20 driver to put the screws in. Now that we have that secure, we can put the two locking tabs in that hold the sump to the body. Now we're going to put the filters back in. The flat one just slides underneath these tabs up here on the spray arm support base. And then the round filter goes in with the little blue dots at 9 and 3 o'clock. And then you can turn it clockwise until these dots line up. And then we can put the lower spray arm back in. All you have to do is push that in and snap it into place. Once you have the lower spray arm in, we can grab the lower rack and put it back in the dishwasher. Put the lower rack back in. All you have to do is line it up and set it on the door. Then you can push it all the way back in. Once you have it in, you can close the dishwasher door. Now that we have the dishwasher put back together, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and check for leaks. Once you're sure you don't have any, then we can put the kick panel back on. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.